Hello everyone, this is Rob from Access and I am in the back of a van with Troy Baker. <laughs> Hello, how are it's, you, Troy? I'm, I'm great and this is probably the coolest and most unique location I know, for an I was about ever. to say, it's really, really comfy I just popped as off well. here to like, you know, kind of nod off for a little bit and then people started coming <laughs> and so it's been fun. As you probably know, Troy is the voice and face of yeah. Delsin Rowe from Infamous Second Son and that's kind of the first thing I want to ask you. You've sure. lent your voice to loads of video game characters across the years but your face has a very prominent role in Infamous Second Son as well. That is how it. How is that for you as an actor? Is it exciting to yeah. finally get like a? I guess it allows you to give more of a performance than you've ever been able to give before in a video game. Well, I mean, definitely what we've seen. You know, we've seen games evolve from a gameplay yeah. perspective, uh, from a graphics perspective, uh, perspective, from a physics perspective, and now what we're seeing is uh, games are really starting to develop from a narrative and a characterization mm -hmm. standpoint as well. And so we've seen that kind of that, that, that voice actor role morph into more of it's, it's the full performance capture mm -hmm. now, um, which we worked very, very hard on myself, Travis Willingham, Laura Bailey. We, we, you know, we put up in the suits, we got the cameras in our faces and everything, and it was something that we captured all in one. So you really start using muscles that maybe you haven't used uh, in a while, uh, both you know, metaphorically and, and literally. Um, but yeah, this was the first time ever that you know, Sucker Punch really pushed the, 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 the boundaries of what they could do game-wise and they, they brought the same kind of philosophy into the performance as well and yeah, to see that's my face, you know, on the cover box and everything, it's, it's incredible how, how they were able to capture that one-to-one -one and put that into the game is really pretty incredible. And does it make you feel like more proud? Like, you, are you more excited that people are going to finally see, you know, what you're capable of like in, in a whole performance not just your voice yeah that's see how you act with with all of your body like a full performance this time it's a slippery slope you know because what I want regardless of what the the outcome is and whatever the process is I always want the character to stand out first mm -hmm. um, so I, I want I want Troy to kind of disappear behind Del Syndrome sure. and because it's different than like TV and film because TV and film is very observational it's it's you're a viewer that's looking in on that world um, but with a game, you're making those choices, especially in a game like Infamous, you're, it's your decisions that affect the outcome of the, of the story, that also in, uh, affect the world, that, that affect the gameplay. So I want people to feel like they are Delson, it's not just me. Um, so you always leave a space where you feel like you fully fleshed out the character, but at the same time you've allowed enough room for that person to come in and kind of fill in those gaps for you. And how do you go about creating the character? I guess you get the script, you look at the script, but I guess there's, there's got to be more kind of creation like from your part as well. Do you Very like much so. And, you know, the team at Sucker Punch with Nate Fox, uh, Billy Harper especially, were, were incredibly gracious to us, bringing us into the process and allowing it to be very collaborative. Mm. Um, and the script was still being written. You know, you start with a very strong structure, which yeah. is what we had. And then you start kind of working on the actual dialogue of that and the actual beats of, 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 of filling out the beats. Um, as we kind of go along and we went up at the very beginning uh, Travis and I went up to Sucker Punch and spent the entire weekend with Nate and Billy and, and really wanted to get the story down and understand who the characters were and and even from the very beginning they really allowed us to become partners in that collaboration um, so once we understood who those characters were the situations that we put them in we could respond to because we understood them you know what I mean yeah and could you give us like a, a brief insight into the the technical the technological process of creating the character? You've got to sure. wear stuff on your face. You've got to wear a suit. <laughs> is that distracting, or do you, when you're in the middle of a performance, you just kind of forget it's there? I mean, what what is it like That's to act the goal. in that environment? That's the goal. It's it's so funny because like again with TV and film, everything that's uh, the 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 makeup, the wardrobe, the hair, the props, those are all mm. tools that help you. Uh, and and this specific medium these actually work against you you have to overcome what you're wearing you have to overcome the fact that there's a camera in your face um, it started we uh, worked for an entire day doing facial scans and doing like emotive expressions so that the system would recognize when I smile this is what it looks like yeah. um, and that was an entire day and they actually made a plaster mold of our face um, so that every time we shot, we'd actually would come in, we'd spend about an hour and a half getting ready. We'd lay down in a makeup chair, they put this mask of our face yeah. over our face and make dots on our face. So we had 64, or actually over 64, I think it was like closer to like 85 dots that were on our face. We had four <laughs> cameras right here that we called antlers because they kind of came out on two like little things. And then you're wearing this ridiculous spandex suit with shiny <laughs> disco balls. So. Yeah, you know, when you're looking at someone, you have to kind of, it's, it's almost like the Matrix, you have to like just, you know, see past and, and go to the code. Um, it, it definitely becomes a, a process you have to overcome, but 
again, that's when you get really talented people in that, that understand their characters and this all just disappeared. You were talking about uh, player choice as well and I guess one of the key choices you can make in Infamous is whether you want to play as a good guy with right. superpowers or as a bad guy with superpowers and I guess for you, you, you have to act both scenarios. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges there of trying to keep the, the character the right. same but also you've got to you know maybe do one half as a nice man and right, right. you're really evil this was the first thing that we really wanted to nail because I'm a fan of the infamous series as mm. well so I understood going in that I kind of came preloaded with that information sure. knowing okay I understood what and it was something with Cole that I wanted to do something different this is a new hero so we could approach it from a fresh perspective uh, but still make it feel like it's an infamous game and for me, it was defining what good and evil meant. And to me, that doesn't mean, you know, either a halo on one guy and horns on the other, yeah. but it's more about what was your motivation for this? Mm -hmm. Is it selfish or is it selfless? And so that's kind of the, the Bible that I use to make those decisions. So it did feel like the same character. It's just, it's kind of there before the grace of God. You can make these choices, you know, and this, this guy's a dick, this guy's a hero, yeah. but those two definitions can be, I mean, just one decision away from each other, you know? So it was, uh, once, I, once you have that understanding, you can really kind of move in the freedom of that. And, and fortunately, we were given enough latitude by Nate and the team to, to kind of explore what that meant. Fantastic. And, and just to wrap up, how would you, and it's probably quite a, a, a big question, but how would you describe Delson? I mean, how, you know, what, what were you able to stamp on him of your own, of your own personality? And you know, oh, is he like you at all in real life? I keep using biblical references, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, but he's the prodigal son before he leaves, you know? And it's it's very much of someone who hasn't found who he is as a man yet. Mm. And it is all about identity. It's who are you? Um, what does that hero look like? Uh, what does that savior look like? And, and to me, that was the entire journey, um, was when someone who is an ordinary person gets put in extraordinary circumstances and that person that says if I just had this I could do that and then you give them that you give them that gun so to speak um, what does that mean for that person so and I, I definitely there was a lot of me that I was able to put into this and for good or for bad <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it <laughs> um, but it's something that I'm truly proud of because I feel like we did uh, we did a great service to the characters and to the story and I'm glad that I was a able to be a part of it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time, Troy. My Actually, pleasure, pleasure man. talking to you. Thank you so much. The game is looking amazing. Looks pretty good. Infamous Second Son is out on March the 21st on PS4 only. Make sure you check it out. For loads of other videos on everything PlayStation, hit that subscribe button.